Hey, thanks so much for joining us for another episode of the Tree of Life Church podcast. It's our prayer that these messages help connect you to the life, love, and power of Jesus. Okay, hey, listen, guys, let's go ahead and look at Matthew 7. Uh, real quick, uh, you know, we, um, we're in a series called Home Team, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm looking for, I, I don't know, I just called it Home Team, and everybody's asking me, well, are you going to, like, tie baseball into it? I'm like, I don't know. And they're like, why'd you call it Home Team? And I said, because I like baseball. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can tie anything into that, but <laughs> I wanted a baseball tie. We're going to get a baseball t-shirt or something. I don't know. I just wanted to, I wanted to do baseball. I love baseball, but really the whole premise of the series is how to build a, building a winning team begins at home. And so your home team is, is, is so important. And uh, we're going to have some fun at the end of the series. Uh, Father's Day is going to conclude the series. Just to let you know, we're going to have Bob Smiley. Bob Smiley is a Christian comedian. He lives in the woodlands, and he's going to come on up and spend Sunday morning with us on Father's Day. And we're going to have a, a lot of laughter, a lot of fun then, too, some activities and giveaways for you on Father's Day. So we'll let you know more about that as it comes. But um, I really just felt impressed to make sure that we're looking at how we build a strong home, a home team, and how important it is today. Because so goes the home, so goes the country, just to be honest with you. Right? So goes the family, so goes the nation. And so we want to make sure that we're doing our job at home. And our homes and families are under attack like never before. And God has some things in the Word that will help us stay strong in the midst of all the challenges. And no matter where you are on the journey, woulda, coulda, shoulda, I, I look at these, I study these out, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I, God's speaking to me, and I'm looking at things, application of my own life. And I got to just remind myself, it's never too late to start where you're at. Amen? And God's the difference maker anyways. He makes up all the difference. He makes up our shortcomings, our mistakes. His grace and his mercy is sufficient. Amen. So I want to encourage you, wherever you find yourself on the journey today, you can begin today. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, we sang a wonderful song that really just uh, illustrated this scripture here, passage. It says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, Jesus speaking to after he just spoke the greatest sermon ever and does them, whoever hears that and does them, I liken him to a wise man who builds his house on a rock Rain descended, floods came, winds blew, beat on that house, it didn't fall, for it was founded on the rock because of the foundation. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Your choice. And the rain descended, floods came, winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. It's always worse than what you can imagine, so it's best to just obey the things of God. Build your house on the things of God. Now, I wanna just give you a few things that I didn't get to last week and then we'll move on into today. But that is our foundational scripture for the course of this series. And number one, I want to encourage you in building your foundation, make God's word a priority. Build your house on the word of God. He just said, you hear the words of God, and then if you don't do them. And here's what I want to say to you. If you're hearing things for the first time, that's amazing, but now you're responsible for them, right? It's like, I never knew that. Well, now you're responsible for it. There you go. And I want to encourage you, but when you take that and you act upon it, it changes everything. We said last week it releases the power of God. The power of God is there, but it's movement that makes the power release and activate in your life, in your home, in your family. So make God's word a priority. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true, what to make us realize what is wrong in our lives, direction and correction comes from it. And it says this, uh, it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. We see the importance and power of God's word. So build your house on the priority of God's word. Number two, trust God. Trust God to meet your needs. Pastor Dave was talking about that earlier. We, we trust him. Our faith and trust is in God. We're in this world, but not of this world. He's Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. World, the world economies and systems change all the time. God never does. And he takes care of his people when you act on his word uh, Matthew 6, 24 says this, no one can serve two masters, either you'll hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. Listen, we need money. I will talk about that in a minute. You need it, it's not bad. You can have it, but don't let it have you, right? And so it's used, God uses that to not only meet your need, but it gives you an abundance to meet the needs of other people. God works through people, amen? Be blessed to be a blessing. Matthew 6, says this. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. All what things? All the things you need for life. God will provide if you put him first. Uh, number three, uh, think generationally and plan accordingly. Think generationally and plan accordingly. 
Uh, it's important for us to think about the next generation. In fact, we're setting the next generation up, amen? We're sending our, our kids, we're working with our kids over there. We're gonna have a kids camp this summer. We're sending our teens this summer. We're, we're setting ourselves up for a wonderful future so they can do more than we ever dreamed. They can go further in the things of God, reach more people, become who God has called them to become. So we need to not be thinking about our moment or ourselves, but those to come after us. Your home is the same way. And then number four, keep your family in church where they can be grounded spiritually and build strong relationships. It's important to not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And uh, you can find the support of scriptures in your live notes on that. Now, let's jump into this week. I wanted to make sure I didn't give that to you last week because of time that you had that. You always can go to live notes and look those over. Um, 1 Corinthians 3.11. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says this, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We're still working on our foundation. We have to always be working on our foundation. We shared this last time before I was living in a part of town that seemed like the ground was always shifting and my foundation cracks were always appearing. My foundation needed some work. I wanna encourage you that you always are working on your foundation. Make sure you're going back and you're, and you're securing and getting back to what you built it on and implementing, applying the things, principles that we're already talking about and what the word says to do. Make sure that foundation is strong because it's what, it's what keeps you and sustains you into your future, so your foundation has to be built on Jesus. Now, having said that, I wanna bring a message today that I brought about a year ago. Now, studying out this, as this message kept rising up in my heart, I really felt the Lord wanted me to bring it again. It'll be a reminder to some, and we need to hear it multiple times for it just really sink into our heart and our life. And then for some, it'll be the first time. But I wanna just share with you this, that I really felt that God had me pull this out of a year ago to be able to reintroduce it today. And so because I really felt that, I really feel like he's gonna speak to some specific things in our lives. I want you to really open up your heart to receive so let me start by reading Luke 9:58, and then we'll work this uh, passage, we'll work this passage, we'll work this message into the context of our series today. But again, uh, open your heart up to receive what I think God wants to speak to all of us. So in Luke 9:58, it says this, "And Jesus said to him, "Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head." The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Interesting scripture, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And we interpret that a lot of times, it's like he's just kind of wandering, he's moving in all places, and he did that. Uh, I think it speaks to something different. I think it speaks to something deeper in this moment and the relationship to the other two examples, foxes have holes, birds have nests, which is I wanna highlight today. Uh, what I really feel, and we're talking about winning at home, building a winning team. We're talking about really peace and strength and stability in our home, because I believe what it says here is when Jesus has no place to lay his head, there was no rest for Jesus' head, or let me say it this way, your mind sometimes doesn't rest. Or is that just me? <laughs> you need a place that you can have peace of mind, where your mind can be at peace, where you can rest your mind, your thoughts, and home is to be that place. And is illustrating, I believe, an example where we need to find a place that we feel safe and secure enough that we've built that we can find peace at home. And let me say this uh, for families, that's not just talking about you. In fact, you might be the responsible one to create an environment, a home, so that your children, your family can find peace and find rest. Because there's none of that out in the world today. And as things are changing all the time and things are happening all the time, it is hard to find any peace. Your mind needs to rest. Your mind needs to rest when you're home. When your home isn't secure, when your home isn't taken care of, your mind can't rest. And I'm not just talking, we had a, my wife and I had a conversation with, we were with another couple a few, uh, a few weeks ago for dinner. And they were talking about, he was always getting in trouble because he'd forget to lock the door at night. And that was like her big thing. Like if that door is not locked, I don't feel like I sleep well. There's no rest. So I'm not just talking about security physically, and that is important as well. I'm talking about a place where you can find, you can come from the storms of this life and find peace, shelter from the storms, where your kids can run to in the midst of the storms of life and find peace and shelter in that home. I'm talking about a place where you can be at rest. And the truth is a lot of people use their work to try and find peace, they use their business, their profession, their success, and in one sense it seems, it's, it, it brings them a sense of stability, a security at, at, at times, but that doesn't mean it does that at home. A lot of people can use their position and their title to find some semblance of, of peace in this world or peace in their job, and a lot of people, let me say it this way, and I don't mean this ugly, but a lot of people are even churchaholics, where you're involved in everything, 
And believe me, I'm the first guy that would kind of want to stand up here and not say that, but the truth is, sometimes you're involved in too much. You're at the church every time the doors open, you're at every service, you're serving everywhere you possibly can, you're at every outreach, and you're leading three small groups. Well, God bless you. But you can be doing all that and still not have peace at home. In fact, sometimes we're doing all these other things because there's not peace at home, and we're trying to find it other places, but if we'll just flip the script and come back and focus on building our homes, it'll give us peace there, even though the world can be in chaos. And we'll never find fulfillment outside of the home in doing that. Now listen, if you succeed in every area of your life, you can, you can have the best health, the best shape, be the best looking, engaging personality, be super successful, financially secure, well-connected, highly respected, and widely accepted. And if you fail to have peace, joy, love in your home, what does it profit you? What does it matter? Because then at the end of the day, at the end of life and stuff, we're not looking at, I wish I'd have spent more time at work. I wish I'd have spent more time here. You don't get that time back. This is important to build your home, build your home, build your home. What good does it do if you have all that stuff on the outside and have no place to lay your head? What is it good to be, be winning out there and losing at home? What good does that do? No place to rest your mind, no place to have peace, no place to feel safe and secure. Uh, to know that, to just to know that this house won't, won't shake, this house won't break, this house won't fall, for goodness sake. No, I'm just my mind runs in rhymes sometimes. I don't know why, I wish it didn't, but it does. So every move you make, every breath you take, <laughs> he'll be watching you. I know, I know, I know it's bad, okay, all right. I did that, I did that, I went there. I'm moving on now. <laughs> to know that home is secure and very, very important to you, that is of utmost importance. I said this last week, I'm not sure if I said it in this service or not, but I said, you can't control the White House or the schoolhouse, but you can control your house. Foxes have holes. When they sense danger or become weary, where do they go? They go to their home. They go to their holes, their homes. It's a safe and secure place for them. But what they know is that no matter what's gonna come, they can deal with it from a safe and secure strength position. Birds of the air have nests. If there's a storm, if there's a predator, if they're weary, they head to the nest. They know they can just get to their nests and find safety and security. Uh, how foxes had to dig their hole. Some, some might find some, but they have to dig their hole. Hard work. You gotta break through some stuff. Birds had to work on building their nests. It took time to build it. It's hard work. And people might say, yeah, but you need to understand my situation. You don't know or understand my circumstances. You don't, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through. And I'd say, you're right, I don't. And I probably never will. But here's what you need to understand. Holes are dug by breaking through difficult things. Nests are built from broken branches. So if you can break through difficult circumstances, you can break through difficult people. If you can build a nest with broken branches, you can build a home with broken people, but it's got to be built. You have to build a home. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Now the problem today is we don't wanna put the work in because we prefer prefab houses, right? We prefer pre-made things. Listen, we want prefab houses and we want prefab spouses, but it doesn't work that way, does it? <laughs> you gotta put the work in. You build a home, you build a marriage, you build a family, you build a life. No one wants to do the work of building the marriage. No one wants to do the work of building the family. No one wants to do the work of building the home. But listen, no one wants to do the work of building a child. Too many times we yell at the child, we, uh, you know, we scream at the child, we threaten the child, we ground the child, we take things away from the child. We have nothing to do with the child at times. We wanna disown the child, but the child has learned a lot of its behavior from the home. <laughs> I said this before, it's funny we're talking about it. I get this way all the time, talk about this next generation. What's this next generation coming to? And why does this next generation do this? And they don't do this and do that. It's like, oh, those are our kids. <laughs> we're the parents of that generation, right? We need, to be, we need to be careful what we're talking about. The child learned a lot of the behavior from what's modeled in front of them. And I'm not just talking about what happens at home. Let's just be honest. We are, we are all products of the sum, to, sum total of our environment and of the sum total of our influences round about us. We're all products of that. So you better have the dominant environment at home 
and you better be the dominant influence in their life. Now, I hesitated at using that word dominant because I think sometimes we, we switch that to control. I'm not talking about controlling your child. I'm talking about controlling the environment your child is in because if you're trying to just control your child and not the environment, then you're just trying to uh, try and have some kind of modified behavior. You're, you're wanting them to do something because you said so. If you, if you want to get conformed behavior, you'll control your child. But listen, one day when they no longer have to conform to you, so you need to control the environment. We don't want conformed behavior, we want transformed hearts. Transformed hearts, not conformed behavior. So we control the environment in our home. We create healthy environments for them to thrive and find peace and safety and shelter there. And we gotta be careful. We need to be the dominant relationship. And again, I wanna be careful of that relationship, I mean of that word dominant, because it has maybe a bad connotation, because I'm not being tyrannical or controlling again. We wanna be the one they wanna be around. I'm not saying we wanna be their friend, because I'll be honest with you, here's what I've learned, and I got a 23-year-old and a 21-year-old, and it's, like, it's not trying to be their friend anymore, it's trying to be that safe place. And so we had rules, I understand that, you have rules in your home, we had rules in our home, we had punishment or consequences to those rules. But you wanna be the environment, you wanna be the environment that creates love and grace where mistakes can be made and corrected gently and in love, because you wanna transform their heart, not conform their behavior, and you wanna be the dominant relationship because you need them to come to you for counsel, not the world. Can I tell you, the world is trying to dominate the relationship with our kids. They're trying to have a dominant environment. And your home has to be that. You have to be that with your children. You have to be that dominant relationship. What I mean by that is you gotta be there for them. You gotta spend time with them. You gotta love them and correct them. You have to do all those things. But the one with the greatest influence has the greatest impact. The one with the greatest voice is who you need to be and you have to be there for it. Don't let the world, don't let social media, don't let uh, school or neighbors or don't, don't even let the church be the dominant relationship, voice and influence. We're here to partner with you. But you're the parent. And you need to make sure that you're the dominant relationship in the life of your kids. I dare say there's probably some of us in here that don't even know the friends of our kids. The relationships. I, there was a name mentioned in our, our house the other day. I got grown kids and they're in and out, moving in and out, right back, boomerang kids, whatever, they're back and forth. And uh, a name was mentioned and I, I looked at my wife and I said, do you know who that is? She goes like, I think that's a new name. We need to meet this person. <laughs> you need to be involved. You need to know. You can't have rules without relationship. We had rules, but you can't have rules without relationship. You want them to follow the rules, not because they fear you, but because they love you. That's why we serve God, because he loves us. I remember my dad all the time, he had rules. He was a Vietnam vet, two tours, and he'd say all the time, I was a, in one sense, I was afraid of him. He's like, son, I, I learned 17 ways to kill a man with my bare hands in Vietnam. I'm like, yes, sir, yes, sir. It was Jeff. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was Jeff. <laughs> but I found out as I got older, I realized I just didn't want to let my dad down. I didn't fear, he was a, he was a great man, a, a great father. I, I didn't fear the punishment anymore. I just didn't wanna let him down. And it's because of the relationship that we were able to create. And so it's, you don't wanna create where they fear you. you, you behave out of fear of you, but out of love for you. And that's the same that our Father, Heavenly Father works with us. And, and you want them to, to live your life, their life in that way because that's important for when they're not in your home anymore. So you have to get down with them. You have to get where they're at. You have to go where they're at. You have to be there. They, you have to start building them block by block, branch by broken branch. You've got to build them. It takes time to build that. And, and do it while people are talking about you and even challenging you or criticizing you and the way you're doing it because the way things are done today are different and they're calling you old school and telling you things like that. I'm like, I think old school's good. I think there's some good things from old school that we need to stick to, amen? I got spanked. I don't know you got spanked. I got, right? I got the belt. I got the spoon. I could pick the switch off the tree, and if it wasn't a good one, you know what I'm saying? Come on, I need to go there. So, anyway, okay, we're not doing that today, all right? All right. <laughs> if I, but I just learned that if any time I need a little amening or something, I'll just talk about disciplining your kids by spanking them, and I'm just like, all right. I'll be talking about tithing, and we'll have to go back there and get some support. Hey, listen, we need to quit listening to the broken world and quit letting them raise our kids. 
We don't have time for all that nonsense. You don't have time for the nonsense of the world when you're trying to build something out of the broken pieces God has given you. Don't get distracted. Build that child. What good is it to build a home if you lose the child? What good is it to build a career if you lose the home? I'm not just talking about physically. I'm talking about relationally, emotionally, spiritually. Build that marriage. Build that family. Build a child. The child will outlast the house. The child will take care of you when you're old. And when you're old, you want them to take good care of you. <laughs> you don't want it to be. It's payback time, mom and dad. Guess what? No, it's like, you don't want that. Pay it forward. Build a child. I know they're broken. I know they're crazy. I know they got on your last nerve last week. I know they disrespect. I know they talk back. I know they curse you out and shut you out. I know that. But build that child. Because you can't have a nest if you can't work with broken branches. You can't have a nest if you can't work with broken kids. You can't have a nest if you can't work with broken husbands. You can't have a nest if you can't work with broken wives. You can't have a nest if you can't work with broken lives. Build that house. You know, the reality is for all of us, let's just be quite honest, every one of our homes, of our houses have flaws. We all have flaws. Now, I said I taught this a year ago, and I did, and last time I taught this, I said we all have cracks, and I got a lot of, <laughs> I got a lot of funny comments after that, so I'm not going to say that this time. I'm going to say we all have flaws. Everyone, look around the room, everybody's dressed nice, look good, church, got fixed up today, the one day, you know, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we look... But every single one of us, no matter how good we look, there's flaws in our life. There's things happening that others don't know because they're not close enough. We don't know. We don't see them. But every one of us has flaws in some way. In some way. I want to give you three areas to build. Three areas to build this morning. Strengthen the foundation of your home to build something secure, a place to lay your head. Number one, you need to be financially grounded. I mean, in our world today that, you know, stock market's up and down, the economy's up and down, there's so much uncertainty, you got inflation and gas prices, you got, my daughter had her, we had her over for her birthday party Friday night, we just kind of cooked dinner, we went to the grocery store to buy fajitas and stuff like that, and I, I don't typically do the grocery shopping, I'm like, what? <laughs> this, I won't be doing the shopping again for a while, I'm just saying, that was just whatever you get. And I was also amazed that shortages on the shelves and things, supply chains, whatever that is. In some industries, I'm talking to some people that are builders, and I'm like, how much are building materials now? And they're like, it's five times what it was, four times what it was. And just to, to go sending our kids to summer camp to rent two buses, and you know, imagine four hours away in a bus, the gas there, the gas back, the gas there to pick them up, the gas back. And I couldn't believe the cost of the buses, but I'm just like, God's going to provide because we're sending our kids to camp. God will provide. God's our provider. You need money. You need stuff. Pastor, all I need is Jesus. No. Jesus says you need money. Jesus says you need it. You might need Jesus to tell you. <laughs> but he doesn't need stuff to have you. You can't pray away your need for stuff. But God has a plan, amen? God has a financial plan. His plan works. His plan works, but you have to work the plan. The power doesn't come on until there's movement. You were here last week. You need to be grounded in God's economy. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. His way works no matter what this world says or does. Malachi 3.10, I didn't put it in your notes, but you know what, I'm not teaching on tithing today, but bring the tithe, return the tithe into the storehouse where you're fed, your house of worship. And see not, if God says, test me, prove me. The only place he says, test me or prove me is in this area. He says, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing I cannot contain. Now, I'm not teaching on that today, but let me just say this lovingly as your pastor trying to help you in an uncertain economy. There's a, a heaven that has apparently a window and it's either open and closed and what opens it is movement. And then he goes on to say, and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. I think what opened God's mouth is movement. And I'll not let your stuff fall from the vine before it's time. He who refreshes others will be refreshed, the Bible says, and God loves a cheerful giver. The world system, the economy is different than God's. We're not bound by that. We have to live according to that. We have to work. We have to pay our taxes, pay our bills. Absolutely. Give unto Caesar what Caesar's, the Bible says. Give unto Rome what's Rome's. But he says that I'll take care of you if you'll put me first and follow my system. 
And the truth is, when you're talking about no place to lay your head, some of us cannot sleep because it's about finances. In fact, if you look at statistics, the greatest source of stress is finances. The number one reason for divorce is finances. And so we have to make sure we follow God's plan. God's plan works. You have the opportunity to lay a solid found financial foundation in your home, it works. Philippians 4.19, my God will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. Number two, you have to be socially grounded. Building your foundation, you have to be socially grounded. Financially, have a solid financial foundation in your home by following the principles of God's word. And let me just say this too, when I talk about thinking generationally, as adults, you need to be tithing, but you need to teach your kids to tithe. Can I just say this, as, I, as a kid, when I, when I got to the point where I had my first job, my parents didn't have to tell me, now son, you need to tithe. I saw them do it my whole life. When I got married to my wife, her family, grew up, she grew up that way too, she, they were tithers. We never had to discuss or fight or argue about tithing or not tithing or your income or my income or any of that stuff. We were on board. I've done it, I've done it. And then as I got older and then I found out for myself the reason why. But I had already seen it, it had worked for me as a kid. I got birthday money, anything. One time our girls were young and we're teaching them. We were in the other building. That's how long ago it was in the loop. And uh, a children's church was upstairs. And so we had a bookstore. And in the bookstore, they sold candy. And we'd given uh, each one of our daughters a dollar. Okay, girls, this is your Jesus money. So we told them, this is, this is Jesus money. We should put in the offering in children's church. And before church started, I was walking through the hallway. And I ran into them. And they both had a bag of peanut, bags of peanut M&Ms. I'm like, where'd you get those peanut M&Ms? And they said, like, in, in the library. That's what they called the bookstore. at the library. And I'm like did you use your Jesus money? <laughs> and they said, yes. <laughs> Look what Jesus bought us. And I'm like, no, Jesus didn't buy that for you. <laughs> you go right back to that bookstore and you tell that lady, thank you. And you get your Jesus money back and give her the M&Ms back. And so I walked them back there to make sure they did it. And the sweet lady in the bookstore said, oh, it's okay, honey. Just keep, here's your dollar back and keep the M&Ms. And I thought, no. <laughs> and it, anyways, it was just a fun story to teach them, you know, again, a, a teaching moment and. um, I just want to encourage you guys, think generationally, right? Best thing we can do, and we don't know what the economy is going to be like, right? I don't know what it's going to be like. I know what God's economy is going to be like. I know what the principles of God's word is going to be like. Build your foundation, work his plan. Socially grounded, social support. Does your family have social support from you? Do you have support? Does your spouse have support? Does your kids have support? If you're singles, do you have support? You need support. When you step into a new season, here's what I think. When we step into a new season, I feel like we've done that as a church of stepping into a new season. I always just think about the support I need for that. But think about the support your family needs. You're making a new decision in life. Your kids have support for that season. Does your spouse have support for that season? They're not just so long for the ride. But if your home is going to be a place of safety and security where they can lay their head, you have to do the things that help them as well. They need to be socially grounded or socially supported. And there's a lot to say about that. Do they have the right kinds of support? Do they have the right kind of friends? I said this earlier. Do you know the names of your friends? Do you know what they're, who they're talking to? Do you know what their social media looks like? If you want to go to another level, you have to build support around you, around your spouse, and around your kids. If stepping into something new, you need to have new support. You need social support to undergird you. It's not enough just to have a vision and a dream, but do you have the support? Are the people around you and your kids, do they have the same values? Are you the only sane voice in your family? Are you the only Christian voice in your family? Because we don't always get it right. So we need support. That's why it's important to have your kids in children's church. Have your kids in our student ministries on Wednesday night, life night, if you can. Get them to camp. It's important for us to go to the men's breakfast we just had yesterday, to go to the ladies' meetings, go to the small groups, go to the marriage group because we need support. Here's the Bible says, bad company corrupts good character, 1 Corinthians 15. And my dad always said this, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, son. What kind of support is there in your life? But I'm not just talking about other support. But let me say this, you can't be everything to everyone. There's a cost. And provision is not just money. It's attention, it's affection, it's time. And let me say this, nothing you have will run right without you. You're a limited resource. And many of us are wore out now because we're 
too many things to too many people. And I want to say that very carefully because we're here to love and serve others. But our first ministry, our first priority is our family. And some of us need to decrease our circle maybe a little bit. Because we are limited resources and you got so many people pulling on you all the time and you only got so much to give. So we have to make sure that our family has our social support. Because again, what good does it do if we do all this and still miss it at home? That's a tough decision at times, but some of us have to make sure knowing that we're a limited resource. Is your family getting your social support? And then the last one, and certainly not the least one, but spiritually grounded. Continue to build that spiritual foundation. Spiritually grounded, spiritual support. The truth is every family is dysfunctional. And I know some of us had the advantage of growing up with a good mom and dad and some didn't. I know some of us had economic advantages and others didn't, but we all still have to walk this out. We all still have to strive for what God has because every family is, dis is dysfunctional in some way. You know, if you do a study on family in the scripture, you'd be hard pressed to find a family that's not dysfunctional in the scripture. <laughs> I mean, think about all the heroes of faith that come to mind immediately. But God's a difference maker, amen? The truth is we all need something we didn't get. Everybody has secrets, everybody has struggles, everybody has problems, everybody has issues, everybody has crazy. <laughs> and now when my crazy married Jessamy's crazy, it just doubled. And if we throw her family in, then it just exponentially, I can't even do the math on that one. But anyways, and then we had two kids and we had our kids crazy to it. Now we got four crazy, four kinds of crazy. And the older your kids get, the more crazy they become. Just look at their social media. You can tell, right? So you get all kinds of crazy in your home and that's when you got to keep it real to keep it running. Sometimes you got to say, I can't fix this, God. I need you. This is too much crazy. I need you to come and fix this God. And when you get a whole lot of crazy, you need a whole lot of God. I love, but I can't fix crazy. But I'm turning over to you, God, what I can't do. You need spiritual support. Because the reality is we could go to God and say, God, I love somebody I can't fix. And my crazy is crazy enough, but add my spouse and add my kids and help. Help, I'm overwhelmed. Help, I'm overwhelmed, God. Foxes have holes, birds have nests. My problem is at the time when I'm the most tired, I have no place to lay my head. I can't lay it on my spouse. She has her issues. I can't lay it on my oldest daughter. She has her issues. I can't lay it on my youngest daughter. She has her issues. And we wonder why we can't sleep and we wonder why food doesn't digest right and we wonder why we have mood swings. Because we have a place to work, we have a place to play, we have, a, uh, we have a battle to fight, we have a giant to kill, we have a mission and purpose to be on, we have a church to go to, but we have no place to lay our head. But God says, come, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God says, my yoke, my burden is light, take mine. God says, cast your care upon me because I care for you. God is there, God is there. And that's why you need to be spiritually grounded because you can't do it. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world, amen? 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says this, therefore my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. What you do, building that foundation financially, socially, spiritually, it works. It's hard work, but it's not in vain. It makes a difference. It strengthens your home. It strengthens your family. Psalm 62, five through eight says this, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation, my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, amen? I shall not be moved. No matter, let the winds blow, let the rain fall, let the water rise, 
let the house shake, but I shall not be moved. For he is my foundation. He is my rock. Amen. And I will build my house upon him. In Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye closed. My heart, my hope today in the message was just to encourage us and keep strengthening that foundation. For some of us, it's our starting point is today. We start from this point forward and praise the Lord. And you can build from this point forward. It's not too late. It's never too late with God. But you got to start somewhere. And the reality is that we all are a mess. There's no perfect family. There's no perfect person. There's only a perfect God who has a perfect word that gives us the tools and things that we need to build a life on him. Thanks again for joining us this week. We pray that this message encouraged and inspired you. If you want to find out how you can be a part of Tree of Life, just go to our website, treeoflifechurch.org. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and share it with a friend.